Hey guys, it's Natalie, and I know it's a little bit late to be doing the best of 2018, but I just started my channel a week ago, and I didn't want to miss the opportunity to talk about what my favorite books of 2018 were. So we're just gonna have to do this a little bit late. Basically the first nine are in no particular order, but then I'm saving my favorite, favorite book of 2018 for last. And of course, these books are books I read in 2018. I'm sure most of them did not come out in 2018. In fact, I know my favorite one didn't come out in 2018. They're just books I read in 2018. So let's get started. The first book I wanna talk about is Shine, Shine, Shine by Lydia Netzer. The main character is a woman named Sunny who has a husband named Maxon that is an astronaut that is basically up in space and they have a beautiful sort of origin of their love story. She's always been bald and he was a savant and he's pretty much kind of on the autism spectrum as well as their little boy is in the story. But as children, because she's kind of odd because she's bald and he's kind of a savant, so just has a hard time making friends, they find each other and so they basically grow up with each other and end up being married and having their son and just it's a beautiful love story but of course you got to throw something in there that's gonna throw everything up in the air wouldn't be a good story so she ends up getting into a fender bender where everybody now realizes she's bald it's something she kind of covers up her husband up in space starts having issues up there she starts wondering if she's really living the life she wants to live and kind of questions that I guess we would call this book a contemporary book because uh, it's not just a love story, even though some people have, I wouldn't call it a love story. I would call it contemporary. It's got a love story, but also has a lot of just deep thinking about what you want and when you do things you think you should do and what is the right direction to go. But it was really, really great and you really will love the characters. So Shine, Shine, Shine by Lydia Netzer. Check it out. The next book I know most of you have heard of because they made it into a movie and that is Ready Player One. And I am like so many people, I was in the theater to see something else, the preview for it came up. And of course, every time I see a really cool preview for a movie and it says based on the book, don't you know, as soon as I get home, I get on my computer and find that book. Ready Player One is set in 2045. I'm gonna tell you a little bit more because I'm, I'm gonna assume not everybody's seen the movie. And basically we are living in a time where we we escape the real world and go into the oasis which is kind of like a 3d video game world where you're completely immersed and you actually feel like you're there that's where everybody goes the movie and the book are somewhat different they basically in the movie took the general idea that the person who created the oasis uh, when they died they had a treasure hunt set up so whoever figured out all the clues would get to own the oasis of course in the book and it's a nice thick book and I say it's a nice thick it's a nice big book in a good way like it's just got so much story and so much and it was so wonderful and I was very curious how are they gonna make this into a movie when this book was so long and so basically what they did in the movie was they took the same premise that there's a contest and everything else where there's the oasis but how you kind of solve the clues and how you got there was different even if you've seen the movie Ready Player One go ahead and pick up the book because it has the same I guess you could say bone story is very different in what the tasks are and what you have to do so you won't be disappointed i enjoyed the book and i enjoyed the movie i think they did a good job taking a book that long and turning it into a movie so ready player one by Ernest Klein. The next book I'd like to tell you about is The Almost Sisters by Jocelyn Jackson. It's about a woman named Leah who's 38 and she's basically dealing with the fact that she is pregnant. It's a biracial baby and she comes from a southern family. But before she even gets the chance to break the news that, hey, I'm pregnant and by the way, it's a biracial baby, kind of wondering how some people in the family will take it. Her stepsister contacts her and says, you know, your grandmother has gotten, her dementia has gotten really, really bad. We need to take action and sees that grandmother is in really bad condition. The grandmother has had a lifelong best friend. She has a black woman who has been her friend since they were little girls. And so she's helping to kind of clear out this huge Victoria home because they need to maybe go to a retirement center. And once she kind of gets that under her belt and kind of knows, okay, I've got to take care of grandma. I've got this under control. She, she's up in the attic trying to clear out the attic and she finds a skeleton. 
like literally a skeleton in the closet. Well, not in the closet, a skeleton in the attic. You know that Wadi the black lady knows something, but she's not talking. The only clue she's really getting is when her 90 year old grandmother has her bouts of dementia and says certain things that clues her in onto what is happening. This was such a wonderful book because it talked about friendships and when you find out why these two old ladies are so bound to each other and they're so respected in their community because I know you're probably thinking they, if you found a skeleton in their house, why aren't they in jail? They are so respected in the community and think, oh, you know, they don't know anything. Of course, Leah knows they know something. But when you find out the reason there's a skeleton in the house, when you find out the origin of this friendship, is so beautiful. The author herself said this is a book that talks about racism because not only do you have these old ladies where you have a white lady and black lady who have been lifelong friends, you have Leah who is pregnant with a biracial baby and how she's kind of dealing with that and dealing with the man who's the father. Um, this was just a very heartwarming book. Really, really great. Definitely want to check this one out. The next book I want to talk about is Illuminate by Amy Agresti. This is about a girl named Haven. She's really, really shy. She's in high school and her and a couple of her other high school friends get chosen to do this internship at this very posh and glamorous hotel in Chicago. And at first it's very exciting. She's caught up in the glamour of the hotel. She's caught up in the glamour of the owner who's a woman named Aurelia. And then her next in command is a man named Lucian. And it all seems seems wonderful until they start realizing maybe these people aren't exactly what they seem. They seem to have a supernatural element about them and not in a good way. And in the meantime, Haven finds this mysterious book that kind of lets her know that she's in danger and what she can maybe do about the situation because these people seem to all belong to some organization of supernatural people who do bad things. I want to tell you exactly how they're supernatural, what exactly the society or the bad things are about. That's something you need to read the book for. But this book, I was totally immersed in it. It was really, really wonderful and very interesting and just, just crazy, just crazy. So check it out. The next book is the Female of the Species by Mindy McGinnis. This is the story of Alex. Alex basically is a teenager who knows how to kill somebody and doesn't feel guilty about it. What happens is her sister is murdered and the man who murders her gets to walk away. So um, Alex takes care of the problem herself. Then we see that she realizes that she has this dark side she is in high school. She doesn't trust herself around other people because of this darkness that she knows that's within her. But of course there is a boy who likes her a lot and she likes two named Jack. She also makes a friend named PK at an animal shelter they work at together. And this book is told in three different perspectives. You have Alex's chapters that Alex is obviously telling you the story but Jack is also telling you the story and also PK is telling you the story and everything kind of rolls and comes together um, during their senior year. This book definitely made you think and it, it had some parts that were, were were kind of sad but all in all a really really good read the female of the species. Next book is The Perfect Stranger by Megan Miranda. This is about a journalist named Leah Stevens who is dealing with the fact that she has a restraining order against her and a possible lawsuit and so she kind of really needs to leave town. She ends up running into an old friend named Emmy who feels like she's in a bad relationship and also wants to leave town. They decide to leave town together and go live in a rural uh, city in Pennsylvania. Once they move there, some weird things are happening. There's a woman who looks just like Emmy who is assaulted but is okay. And then a few days later, Emmy disappears completely. She finds a police officer named Kyle who is helping her. And as she investigates more and more, she realizes maybe she just didn't know Emmy as well as she thought she did. In fact, she gets to the point that she's like, who is this Emmy? The things they find about her aren't adding up. The things they're not finding about her aren't adding up. So that was definitely one of my favorites for 2018 though. Our next book is The Nightingale, which is a very popular historical fiction. This book is about two sisters during World War II, during the occupation or the Nazi occupation of France and how these two sisters try to help out in different ways because one is a mother, so she has to take that into account. 
I will tell you, as wonderful as this book is, there are some hard parts in it because we're talking about Nazis. So obviously when we're talking about Nazis in World War II, there's going to be some hard parts to read. I read this for a book club and waited until the last minute, so I had to read this in about two days. And there were times where I wanted to stop and kind of put the book down and kind of just think and reflect on what I just read because there were some hard scenes and I didn't have the luxury I had to power through and read the whole thing. I cannot remember another time where I've read a book and at the end, I mean, yeah, I've teared up. No, this wasn't tearing up. I was boo-hoo crying, my face swollen at the end and not in a necessarily in a bad way. And it's just a beautiful story. One of the best, if not, well, I'd say it's the best historical fiction I've read so far. So if you haven't read The Nightingale and you like historical fiction, or maybe even if you don't like historical fiction, I think you'd really like this one. And the last one, before I get to my most favorite one, is The Veritas Deception by Lynn Constantine. In fact, it says right on there, a thriller. In fact, that's what grabbed my interest. I believe in the store I was looking around and I saw a thriller. I went, oh, I love thrillers. Let's, let's check it out. This really reminded me kind of like a cross between a Dan Brown book and then that movie with Nicolas Cage, National Treasure. It was kind of a cross between that. We have a senator who is murdered um, right after he changes his vote on a bill. He leaves one clue for this journalist named Jack Logan. So he ends up being on this hunt trying to find these ancient relics that date back to the time of Christ. And of course, there's a great big conspiracy of powerful people trying to stop him. He doesn't know who he can trust or who he cannot trust. He wants to figure out who murdered his friend because he cares. He also wants to find out what is so important about these relics. And then, of course, when he finds out the importance of these relics, he knows he needs to find them before they get into the hands of the wrong person. So this was, they weren't kidding. They called it a thriller. It was a thriller for sure. All right, and the last book, which was my favorite book, and I've heard many booktubers talk about how it was their favorite book, was The Night Circus. The Night Circus does a really great job of being both beautiful and having a great plot. We have two magicians that have been trained from a young age to be in a fierce competition where only one of them can stand, but neither one of them realizes they're in a competition. So of course, not knowing that they're in a competition and knowing each other in the Night Circus world, they uh, fall in love. And I'm going to leave it with that, but definitely check out The Night Circus. I can't imagine anybody not loving this book. It is amazing. Thank you so much for watching. If you liked what you saw, please hit subscribe and I will check you out next time. Bye guys.